Hi guys, I'm Rival. Welcome back to another PHP tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about error handling. So what do we mean by error handling? Consider a class which reads a CSV file. We will write code to read the CSV file and then process it. In perfect scenarios, a CSV will always be present to read. But what if it's not? What if the CSV is corrupt? What if the file permissions in your server prevent you from reading the CSV? Plenty of things can go wrong. Our code should respond to this. So how should we respond? We could end execution of the script, but this is too drastic because the entire application will come crashing down. We could return an error flag to the calling code, but this relies on the calling code on producing effective error reporting and debugging information to the developer. With PHP 7, we can type hint and declare return types. This helps, but it doesn't give enough information to the developer. It can say, well, if we expect an array and suddenly we get false, PHP will throw the error, but it doesn't say why we get false instead of the expected array. So this is where exceptions come into play. So exceptions. An exception is an object instantiated from the built-in class exception. It was introduced in PHP 5, so it's been around for a while. The main function of an exception is to hold error data. It accepts an error message and error code as part of the parameters. So you know in programming you would like a message to go with an error code. So it's just easier to report and understand what's gone wrong with the code if you have an, an error code, something that's easy and identifiable. The error exception class also contains multiple methods to help retrieve this error data. So how do we use exceptions? To use exceptions, we throw them. We use the keyword throw. It will hold the execution of the current method, then pass responsibility back to the calling code. But didn't you just say we shouldn't be passing responsibility back to the calling code? I didn't exactly say that. What I said is, we don't want the responsibility to be in the calling code to provide good debugging information. So we can send an error flag back to the calling code. This can work. But the problem comes with handling the error flag. Does the calling code have methods to handle the specific error? Will the calling code just kill execution? Will the calling code produce effective debugging information? And that's key here. That's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to get. Key debugging information. So catching an exception. When invoking methods, which could potentially throw exceptions, we should use the try clause. The try clause is always followed by a catch clause. So what we are doing is we are trying to run some code, and if there are any exceptions thrown, we catch these exceptions. Report Once caught, we can take advantage of the exception reporting and kill the script. Okay, so let's take a look at exceptions in action. So what we can see in front of us here is just PHP Storm. It has a very simple project open, and all the point of this project is, is to read a very simple CSV file. On the left here, you can see we have our CSV file. It just has one row, it says position, attacking, defense. Very simple. In our index.php, you can see we're using auto loading, and we have a class called CSV handler, which reads a CSV. Here's the path to a CSV. And if we take a look here, so on the left you can see CSV handler. We have our method read, and all it does is reads a CSV. Simple as that, and prints it to the screen. So back in our index.php, you can see uh, we have the path here, and what I'm trying to display to you is, let's see if this is gonna work. So we go to Chrome, hit refresh, and great, it's always working. It's giving us exactly what we want. We just want to see the row printed to the screen. So that's going to work all the time. Okay. So in this perfect world scenario, it's always going to work. The data file is uh, the data.csv is always there. It's always named data.csv. You know, the, the path is always going to be correct. And this is always going to work. But if you go back to that presentation and think, what if someone comes in, uploads a new file, and, ch and you know they accidentally have a typo in it, and then it's not data.csv anymore? What happens if the file permissions have changed? What if you can't read this file? So there are things that can go wrong in, in the real world, and you want your code to adapt to it. 
So let's see how this code adapts. We have storage data CSV. So if we went here and renamed our CSV file, uh, where is renamed refactor, rename. So renamed it to, I don't know, data S, datas. Just close that. Um, and of course, I didn't do it. Just do data that's not search for references and then just go refactor, done. So now it's datas.csv. So let's try rerunning this code. And it fails. It gives us warning messages. So warning file data to CSV fail to open stream, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So where this is not, you know, end of the script, they are warning messages, but the fact is I'm sure whatever you're doing afterwards, you obviously need that data in a real world sort of application. You're going to perform some sort of uh, processing on that data. So this is not going to work too well. And when you look at it, yeah, it does tell you warning storage data that CSV fails to open stream. But you know, why, why, why is this, why is this warning occurred? So back to our code, we have our CSV handler here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if the file does not exist, so part to CSV, we are going to throw a new exception. So throw new exception. We're then going to give a message saying CSV cannot be read check file name so you can have exception like that with the backslash or you can import the class and just use exception at the top simple as that so we have throw new exception csv cannot be read check file name optionally we can pass a error code i'm not going to do that for this example back to our index.php so now this is how we need to actually run this code. We'll use our try clause that we spoke about earlier. So try open braces. And what we're going to do is just move this down. And let's just tab that in. Now it's PHP storm is saying there's an error here. The reason for it, if you remember, a try block or try clause is always followed by catch. So here, what are we catching? The exception, and it's going to be exception. Okay, so now we have to respond to this error. We have to say this is the calling code responding to the error and taking advantage of the exception error methods. So I'm just going to copy and paste this code here. Actually, instead, I'm going to say message. Okay. And we're going to go exception. So let's see what can we grab from our exception object. We have get traces string, get file. So numerous, numerous methods here that we can take advantage of. So now I'm just going to copy and paste this code. And here we go. So now what you're going to see is the message. So the actual message that we, we told it to output, then the file. So where the, the error occurred, the line and the trace as well. So let's go back and see. So take a look here. It just says warning. So very limited information. Control R. And what happens is CSV cannot be read. Check file name. So then it says the actual file, it says the line, and it gives you the trace as well. So this is a little bit cleaner, a little bit more neater. It gives the developer more information as to why the error occurred, and it's much easier to debug. So that's a very simple usage of uh, an exception, how your code should respond to errors. And now I'm going to take it a little bit further. So this is very simple, so please stay with me. We go back to PHP Storm. We go to our source folder and we're going to create a new one called exceptions. And what we can do here is we're going to create a new class and we're going to call it CSV exception. Okay. Click OK. So let's just make this a bit larger. Got a namespace here. 
So namespace is um, what was CSV handler. So it's going to be Reval backslash exceptions. Right. Okay. So now I'm actually going to show you a subclass of an exception. So you know you have the base class exception with all the various methods. It that PHP does allow you to extend this class. So extends exception. Okay. So that's all you have to do for now. When we go back to our CSV handler, instead of throwing exception, we'll throw a CSV exception. So we don't have to use exception anymore. We'll use Reval exceptions CSV exception and it's going to throw that. Back to our calling code, we don't have to cache exception anymore. We can catch CSV exception. And let's just import that because that does not look good. There we go. That's much better, much cleaner. So now we go back to Chrome, refresh it. It's still going to be showing the same error information, but it, in your code, when you uh, trying to debug, it's a little bit more clearer what sort of exception it is. It's a CSV exception. Is something wrong with the CSV itself? So the point of exceptions, the point of this style of coding is to give the developer as much information as possible. This means your, your code is much, much cleaner, much more understandable, easier to read. And as developers, that's all we're trying to do is to make sure the next developer his life is as easy as possible when supporting your code. So in our CSV exception class, you can have multiple methods here, you know, little extra methods to make it a little bit easier to handle your uh, exception itself. So um, I'll always recommend doing these sort of what's also referred to as custom exceptions or subclassing exceptions, just because it's much easier. So that also means you can have multiple catch methods or clauses. And if you do exception here, so you're catching another exception, you'll end up throwing different exceptions because of course this is quite small, our CSV handler, it just does one thing. But if we had multiple methods that were running with, mul with various sort of exceptions, again, your, your catch becomes a little bit more clear. Where's the, um, where's the, the try actually gonna, uh, throw the exception and where's it going to be caught. So it's a little bit clearer to the dev. You'll know where to look, where to debug. So I'll always advise doing that. I think error handling is very important when writing code. So if you don't do this and if you don't know how to do it, I suggest make sure you know and implement it in your next project. Thanks for watching guys. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.